welcome back. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa patronized the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. Upon the arrival of His Majesty's motorcade at Isa Cultural Hall, accompanied by a group cavaliers, His Majesty was received by the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Musallam, and the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh. After the national anthem was played, his Majesty headed to the conference hall. Assalamu alaikum. الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه سيدي صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله ورعاه أصحاب السمو أصحاب المعالي والسعادة أيها السيدات والسادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته 
يشرفنا أن نرحب بكم أجمل ترحيب في حفل افتتاح دور الإنعقاد الثاني من الفصل التشريعي السادس لمجلسي الشورى والنواب وخير ما نبدأ به تلاوة عطرة من القرآن الكريم يتلوها على مسامعنا القارئ علي صلاح عمر The event began with the recitation of verses from the Holy Quran. وأمرت لأن أكون أول المسلمين قل إني أخاف إن عصيت ربي عذاب يوم عظيم قل الله أعبد مخلصا له ديني فاعبدوا ما شئتم من دونه قل إن الخاسرين الذين خسروا أنفسهم وأهليهم يوم القيامة ألا ذلك هو الخسران المبين لهم من فوقهم ظلل من النار ومن تحتهم ظلل ذلك يخوف الله به عباده يا عباد فاتقون والذين اجتنبوا الطاغوت أن يعبدوها وأنابوا إلى الله لهم البشرى فبشر عباد الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه أولئك الذين هداهم الله وأولئك هم أولو الألباب صدق الله العظيم يتفضل سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه لإلقاء كلمة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أيها الإخوة والأخوات أعضاء المجلس الوطني الموقرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته فعلى بركة الله وبعون منه يسعدنا أن نفتتح دور الإنعقاد الثاني للمجلس الوطني في فصله الحالي متطلعين معكم إلى دورة عمل مثمرة على درب الارتقاء والرخاء لمسيرتنا الوطنية المباركة والمتجهة بكل ثقة وثبات نحو المزيد من التحسين والتطوير والإزدهار بإذنه تعالى وفي هذا الوطن المنفتح على كل فكر نير ورأي مخلص فقد سجلنا معا أهم اللحظات والمواقف التاريخية واستطعنا وفق ما أقرته مصالح البحرين العليا أن نرفع راية الإصلاح والتحديث عالياً 
دون وصاية من أحد لنلبي طموحاتنا وتطلعاتنا المشتركة وبحسب ما أجمعت عليه وتوافقت حوله الإرادة الوطنية ومن الأهمية بمكان أن يواصل مجتمعنا البحريني المعروف بوعيه المدني المتحضر وقراره المستقل في الحفاظ على مكتسباته وبالوقوف صفا واحدا في وجه كل ما يخل بوحدته واستقراره بالإيمان الصادق وبقيم التعايش الإنساني وبفضل من الله وفضل هذه الصحوة الوطنية تبقى بلادنا مرفوعة الرأس عالية القامة مهما بلغت شدة التحديات التي تذللها في كل الأوقات عزيمة أهلها وصلابة إرادتهم وثبات واستقرار مؤسساتها الدستورية ومن بينها المؤسسة القضائية المستقلة في قراراتها والحريصة على أن تتواصل إصلاحاتها وإنجازاتها على الصعيدين القضائي والحقوقي وأننا لماضون يدا بيد بذات القوة والعزم وبروح وطنية لا تعرف إلا النصر والرفعة لوطن الجميع الذي ورثنا أمانة من بنات نهضته الحديثة الذين صدقوا فيما عاهدوا الله عليه وتولوا مسؤولياتهم الوطنية على الوجه الأفضل والتزاما منا بواجب العرفان لهم سنظل نحتفي بذكراهم تكريما لعطائهم رحمهم الله جميعا وأحسن مثواهم الحضور الكريم إنها لمناسبة طيبة لتجديد الاعتزاز بما أنجزته المؤسسة التشريعية التي حرصنا منذ البداية على أن يكون تطورها نابعا من صميم الإرادة الشعبية وسيبقى هذا النموذج الفخور بخصوصيته مستقلا بإرادتكم وغنيا بإسهاماتكم وأمامنا الكثير لإنجازه معكم بعون الله وتوفيقه ولا يفوتنا ونحن نشيد بأداء مجلسنا الوطني أن نثني على جهود السلطة التنفيذية وحرصها اللافت للحفاظ على أعلى مستويات التعاون مع السلطة التشريعية وهو تعاون مثمر وبناء يضع نصب العين مصلحة الوطن والمواطنين كما نخص بالذكر المساعي الحكومية المخلصة بقيادة وتوجيه ولي عهدنا الأمين صاحب السمو الملك الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة لترجمة التطلعات الوطنية بنهج تشاركي للحفاظ على ريادة البحرين التنموية وعلى مكانتها الرفيعة كمنبر للتقارب الفكري والحضاري بين الأديان والثقافات وكوجهة تمتاز بتراثها وطابعها العمراني العريق لمدنها وضواحيها ونوجه هنا بوضع خطة عمل تختص بالمحافظة على الهوية التاريخية والثقافية لمباني ومدن البحرين وسنعمل في سياق ذلك على أحياء قصر عيسى الكبير الذي سنعتمده كأحد المقار الرئيسية لعملنا ومعها الأحياء المعروفة بمدينة المحرق التي نتطلع إلى عودة أهلها لها تكريما لذلك المجد الوطني المشهود في وطن الطيبة والكرامة 
ومن واقع بأن عالمنا لا يستمع إلا لصوت التحالفات القوية والمؤثرة في مسيرة التقدم الحضاري تتواصل مساعينا في توثيق علاقات التقارب والتكامل وتنسيق المواقف على قاعدة راسخة من الانسجام والتشاور والتعاون الأخوي تحت مظلة مجلس التعاون لدول الخليج العربية وضمن رابطة الجامعة العربية وهو أمر لم ولن نتوقف يوما عن دعمه وخدمة مصالحه تحقيقا لتطلعاته من أجل خير ورفع الدول وشعوب المنطقة وستبقى قضية العرب الأولى أولويتنا الكبرى وموقف مملكة البحرين في دعم وتأييد جهود السلام الشاملة لإيجاد حل عادل للقضية الفلسطينية له موقف ثابت لا حيادة عنه وصولا لحل الدولتين وفق مبادرة السلام العربية وبما يضمن حق الشعب الفلسطيني الشقيق في إقامة دولته المستقلة وعاصمتها القدس الشرقية وأن تكون المساعي السلمية والتهدئة هي الخيار الأوحد في وجه التصعيد القائم لنصل إلى الحل المنشود وختاما نتوجه بكثير من الامتنان لكل جهد وطني مخلص في ساحات العمل وميادين الإنتاج ونخص بالتحية والتقدير قواتنا المسلحة الباسلة بكافة أجهزتها وجميع كوادرها وهي تؤدي الواجب بكل جدارة وشجاعة لحفظ سيادة مملكتنا الغالية وعلو شأنها وستبقى التضحيات الجليلة لشهداءنا الأبرار في ميادين الشرف دفاعا عن الحق ونصرة الأمة خالدة على الدوام في الضمائر والوجدان داعين المولى عز وجل أن يتقمد أرواحهم الطاهرة بواسع رحمته وأن يدخلهم فسيح جنانه إنه سميع مجيب الدعاء والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته صاحب الجلالة أيها الحضور الكريم الكلمة الآن لمعالي السيد أحمد بن سلمان المسلم رئيس مجلس النواب The Speaker of the Representatives Council also delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for opening the second session of the sixth legislative term in which further development gains for the country and his people will be made with the leadership of His Majesty the King during the march of reform and modernization. He affirmed that Bahrain, with His Majesty's support, overcame all challenges and made remarkable achievements. He affirmed the legislative authority's keenness with the co -co cooperation of the government led by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, on implementing national uh, legislature and priorities with a follow-up on the implementation of the government plan for his contributions to making achievements. He affirmed that efforts will continue to implement all the agreements concluded during the constituents of the general state budget. The speaker affirmed his keenness on continuing to develop the human rights system and supporting national mechanisms in light of the development of the National Institute for Human Rights and the issuance of the Royal Order 39 of the year 2023, which achieved further transparency, independence and impartiality. He highlighted the outcomes of the alternative penalties law and the open prisons program, as well as the many human rights supporting programs and initiatives. Adam Salem added that his Majesty the King's address has outlined the next stage and affirmed the cultural and historical identity as well as the Arab and Islamic values of the people of Bahrain. He stated that it calls for further efforts and attributes a further responsibility for the development of the country and its people. He praised the royal directives in reviving the Isa Grand 
Grand Palace and approved it as the main headquarters. He also affirmed the role of the legislative authority in delivering the civilized message of the kingdom, stand by brothers and friends, enhanced relations that are based on trust and respect, as well as enhancing the values of tolerance and peaceful coexistence in order to achieve further progress and prosperity. He added that Bahrain succeeded in enhancing GCC Arab and Islamic action, regional and international cooperation, as well as combating hate speech, especially during the IPU meetings that were held in Bahrain under the patronage of His Majesty the King, which aimed to affirm the kingdom's role in spreading peace, stability, and achieving sustainable development goals. He affirmed Bahrain's firm stance towards the Palestinian cause and the establishment of a Palestinian state in accordance with international legitimacy resolutions and the Arab Peace Initiative. He praised the continuous achievements of the kingdom in all fields and affirmed that the support of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness as well as the efforts of the people of Bahrain motivate to make further accomplishments. He recalled with pride the sacrifices of the brave Bahrainis and prayed to Allah the Almighty to rest their souls in eternal peace. He pledged allegiance to continue the efforts in order to achieve security, stability, progress and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty the King. مؤكدين المضي قدما بعملنا المشترك لتنفيذ كافة التوافقات التي تمت خلال إقرار الميزانية العامة للدولة ومواصلة العمل بروح الفريق الواحد كما أسفر الدور المحوري للسلطة التشريعية في دعم مسيرة النهضة الحضارية وتطوير منظومة التشريعات الداعمة لخطط الحكومة وبرامجها التنموية وخلق البيئة التشريعية المحفزة لزيادة الاستثمارات وتحقيق أهداف خطة التعافي الاقتصادي وبرنامج التوازن المالي من أجل دعم الاقتصاد الوطني وتنويع مصادره وخلق فرص العمل النوعية التي تعمل على تحسين المستوى المعيشي للأسرة البحرينية ويحصد ثمارها المجتمع بأكمله وأننا عاقدون العزم على مواصلة الارتقاء بمنظومة حقوق الإنسان ودعم الآليات الوطنية في ظل ما شهدته المؤسسة الوطنية لحقوق الإنسان من تقدم وتطور وصدور الأمر الملكي رقم 39 لسنة 2023 والتعديلات السامية والذي حقق المزيد من الشفافية والاستقلالية والحيادية انسجابا مع مبادئ باريس ذات الصلة بعمل المؤسسات الوطنية فضلا عما حققه التنفيذ قانون العقوبات البديلة برنامج السجون المفتوحة والعديد من البرامج والمبادرات الداعمة لحقوق الإنسان في مجتمع قوامه الحرية والمساواة والعدالة صاحب الجلالة أن لكل طريق نبراس يهتدى به وأن الخطاب السامي لجلالتكم الذي تفضلتم به اليوم جاء بمثابة النبراس الذي أضاء لنا معالم المرحلة المقبلة مؤكدا على هويتنا الثقافية والتاريخية ومرسخا لقيمنا العربية والإسلامية معززا لمبادئنا الحضارية المستقبلية وأن الخطاب السامي لجلالتكم يفتح أمامنا آفاق رحبة تنطلق من رؤية جلالتكم الثاقبة آفاق متزامنة مع الواقع والتطلعات المستقبلية كما يحثنا على المزيد من العطاء والإنجاز ويحملنا مسؤولية أكبر تعمل على ترسيخ الخطوات الثابتة للنهوض بالوطن والمواطنين مشيدين بتوجيهات جلالتكم السامية في إحياء قصر عيسى الكبير واعتماده كأحد المقار الرئيسية للعمل مع الأحياء المعروفة بمدينة المحرق تكريما وتقديرا للمجد الوطني العريق الذي نعتز ونفتخر به صاحب الجلالة أن السلطة التشريعية والتزاما بنهجكم السامي في السعي والحثيث لدعم إرساء الأمن والاستقرار وتعزيز دور الدبلوماسية الإقاثية لمد يد العون والمساعدة لدول وشعوب العالم انطلاقا من الواجب الإنساني تؤكد دعمها لتطوير جاهزية كافة الجهات المختصة لأداء الرسالة الحضارية لمملكة البحرين في الوقوف إلى جانب الأشقاء والأصدقاء وتوثيق العلاقات المتبادلة القائمة على الثقة والاحترام والتقارب والتكامل ونشر وتعزيز قيم ومبادئ التسامح والتعايش السلمي وتحقيق النماء والرخاء وانطلاقا من حرص مملكة البحرين على التمسك بمبادئ العمل الخليجي الواحد والعمل العربي المشترك والتضامن الإسلامي والتعاون الإقليمي والدولي فقد استطاعت الدبلوماسية البرلمانية البحرينية الفعالة أن تبرز دور ومكانة مملكة البحرين خاصة خلال رعاية جلالتكم السامية لاجتماعات الاتحاد البرلماني الدولي 
الذي عقد في مملكة البحرين في شهر مارس الماضي وتبنى الاتحاد دعوة جلالتكم السامية في مكافحة خطاب الكراهية والتعصب والتأكيد على أن السلام هو الخيار الاستراتيجي نحو عالم أكثر أمانا واستقرارا وازدهارا وتحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة مؤكدين موقف مملكة البحرين الثابت في دعم القضية العربية الأولى وتأييد جهود السلام الشامل والعادل وتثبيت حقوق الشعب الفلسطيني الشقيق وإقامة الدولة الفلسطينية وفقاً لقرارات الشرعية الدولية ومبادرة السلام العربية من أجل حاضر ومستقبل المنطقة وشعوبها والأجيال القادمة صاحب الجلالة إنما تشهده مملكة البحرين في ظل رعايتكم السامية ودعم ومتابعة سمو ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء في تطور كافة الخدمات واستدامة النهضة في مختلف القطاعات والمجالات التنموية وبجهود وطنية مخلصة من أبناء الوطن جميعا بعزيمة صادقة وطموحات مستقبلية يدفعنا للمزيد من العمل والإنجاز لخير الوطن والمواطنين معربين عن بالغ اعتزازنا بالجهود المتميزة والتضحيات الخالدة لجنودنا البواسل في القوات المسلحة بكافة أجهزتها وكوادرها داعين الله تعالى بالرحمة والمغفرة لشهداء الواجب الوطني المقدس الذين قدموا أرواحهم الغالية ودماءهم الزكية فداء للوطن الغالي ختاما نجدد العهد والولاء لجلالتكم حفظكم الله ورعاكم سائلين المولى عز وجل أن يديم على مملكة البحرين الأمن والأمان والتقدم والازدهار في ظل قيادتكم الحكيمة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The ceremony concluded with the national anthem, His Majesty and His Royal Highness then were bid farewell.
The royal speech at the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term focused on many aspects, especially those related to local affairs in the Kingdom of Bahrain, and thus represented a set of royal visions and goals for achieving prosperity and development. The royal address of His Majesty the King at the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term constituted a platform of action for the next stage, with its visions and ideas addressing many aspects and focusing on local affairs to achieve prosperity and development at various levels. During His Majesty's address, His Majesty the King stressed on reform and modernization independently, without any external influence, which comes from the standpoint of national will, evident in the achievements made in many fields, especially the legal field, where His Majesty noted the importance of the judicial institution's continuation of reform. His Majesty also stressed the necessity of continuing cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities, as the legislative authority is the core of the popular will, and this cooperation prioritizes the interests of the nation and citizens in all government programs. The Royal Address clearly indicated the need for Bahraini society to continue to stand united in the face of all that disturbs its unity and stability, with sincere faith and the values of human coexistence, which stems from His Majesty's approach and his prosperous era with the National Action Charter. Also, His Majesty's address affirmed the Kingdom's continued efforts to strengthen relations and coordinate positions in the Gulf and Arab countries. In the Arab context, His Majesty affirmed the firm position towards the Palestinian cause, which is considered the first Arab issue and the greatest priority for the Kingdom of Bahrain. Also, the sacrifices of the martyrs of Bahrain on the fields of honor and defense of the truth will remain immortal in history. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks and appreciation from the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Limsalam, for His Majesty's opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. The Speaker praised the content of His Majesty's speech that aimed to continue national work and achieve the aspirations of His Majesty in serving the nation and the citizens in achieving progress and prosperity for the kingdom. He also affirmed that His Majesty's permanent support and assistance to the Council stems from his deep belief in the principles and foundations of democracy, which is for for the benefit of Bahrain and its people. He wishes Mashi lasting good health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks and appreciation from the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, for His Majesty's opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. The Chairman praised the contents of His Majesty's address that aimed to continue national work and achieve the aspirations of His Majesty in serving the nation and the citizens in achieving progress and prosperity for the Kingdom. He also affirmed that His Majesty's permanent support and assistance to the Council stems from his deep belief in the principles and foundations of democracy, which is for the benefit of Bahrain and its people. He wished his Majesty lasting good health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Ghibiya Palace. The cabinet highlighted the importance of the address given by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa during the opening ceremony of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils, which set forth His Majesty's far reaching visions on the next phase of development and national contributions. The cabinet affirmed that His Majesty the King's royal orders are the foundation for government work and that the government is honored to implement them. The cabinet stated that the plan to preserve the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities and to launch the Muharraq City Development Plan will be implemented immediately as per the royal order. The cabinet highlighted that civilian protection should be a top priority in light of the current developments in the Gaza Strip between Palestinian factions and Israeli forces, calling for de-escalation and adherence to international humanitarian law. The cabinet emphasized the international community's responsibility in ending the armed conflict and protecting civilian lives. It stressed the importance of supporting the peace process and reaching a diplomatic solution through negotiations to bring forth a two-state solution with other international legitimacy resolutions.
The Cabinet discussed several memorandums during the meeting approving the following. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Interior on following up on the initiative to develop websites for each government entity according to the standards of the 2024 United Nations e-government survey. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the executive program of, the M of an MOU between the Government of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Government of the Kingdom of Morocco for Cooperation in Youth Affairs for 2023-2024. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on an MOU between the Ministry of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture and the Gulf of Petrochemical Industries Company, JPEC, the MOU aims to enhance industrial and agricultural cooperation and integration. A memorandum by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Education and Training Quality Authority regarding the approval of the authority's reports. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to three proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed the memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee on Oversight and Licensing of the Tourism Sector in accordance with the 2022-2026 Tourism Sector Strategy. In addition, the Cabinet noted the following ministerial reports. Outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the opening ceremony of the 2023 International Horticulture Exposition, uh, Exposition in Doha. Outcomes of the 34th meeting of Their Excellencies, the Ministers Responsible for Agriculture and Food Security in the GCC countries. Outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the Abu Dhabi International Petroleum Exhibition and uh, Conference, ADIPEC 2023. Outcomes of the High Level Forum on Implementing the Second Arab Decade for Persons with Disabilities 2023-2032 and the Visit Exchange Program with the Republic of Tunisia. Outcomes of the Seventh Meeting of Ministers Responsible for Tourism in the GCC. Outcomes of the Visit of the Minister of Youth Affairs to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited the BDF General Command. His Royal Highness was received by the BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Defense Lieutenant General Abdullah Naimi, the BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab Naimi, and other senior officers. His Royal Highness affirmed that the efforts of the BDF's loyal personnel as part of Team Bahrain, as appreciated by all, and have along, alongside various allies contributed to the region's security and stability. His Royal Highness recognized the BDF personnel's pivotal role in protecting the kingdom's and citizens' interests and in safeguarding the kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces. His Royal Highness commended the BDF's personnel's courage, bravery and steadfast determination to uphold the kingdom's honorable values, adding that the sacrifices of fallen servicemen will remain etched in the kingdom's history. He was then briefed on the BDF's current and future development plans and programs that further combat readiness efficiency, His Royal Highness concluded by extending his gratitude to the members of the BDF for their sacrifices and loyal service which has safeguarded the Kingdom's sovereignty, development and wide-ranging achievements. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Speaker of the Representative Council Ahmed bin Salman Al Musallam and the Chairman of the Shura Council Ali bin Salah Al Salah Hadd Ghabiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of the address given by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa during the opening ceremony of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Council, which was held under His Majesty the King's patronage. The address outlined His Majesty's visions for the next phase of the Kingdom's development and national contributions. His Royal Highness called 
called to enhance the cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities to achieve the desired aspirations for Bahrain and its people. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, highlighted the efforts of the legislative authorities in supporting the kingdom's development and wished them success. His Royal Highness expressed his aspirations that the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils will add to the kingdom's development achievement. His Royal Highness noted the role of Team Bahrain in supporting the visions of His Majesty the King and in furthering accomplishments that will benefit all. For their part, Alam Salam and Al Saleh expressed their appreciation for His Royal Highness's commitment to strengthening cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities. Representatives Council Speaker and the Shura Chairman affirmed their commitment to serving the Kingdom and its citizens. The Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior General, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, along with other senior officials, also attended the meeting. In implementation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's Royal Order, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa directed government agencies to initiate a plan to preserve the historical and cultural identity of the kingdom's buildings and cities and to launch the Muharraq City Development Plan. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of the address given by His Majesty the King during the opening ceremony of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura Council and the Council of Representatives. The address outlined His Majesty's far reaching visions on the kingdom's comprehensive development aimed at benefiting Bahraini citizens. His Royal Highness noted the government's commitment to implementing His Majesty the King's royal orders in line with best practices and quality standards. He recognized the importance of ongoing cooperation with the legislative authority and of strengthening public-private partnerships. His Royal Highness concluded by highlighting that His Majesty the King's directives form the cornerstone of the kingdom's wide-ranging achievements, adding that public sector professionals continue to perform their duties with determination. His Royal Highness, uh, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the Speaker of the Council of Representatives Ahmed Lim Salam following the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura Council and the Council of Representatives. Lim Salam expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness's support and commitment to advancing the Kingdom's development and consolidating the cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the Chairman of the Shura Council Ali Al Saleh following the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura Council and the Council of Representatives. Al Saleh affirmed his commitment to continuing to strengthen cooperation and coordination with the government and to formulate legislative initiatives that contribute to national achievements and successes under the leadership of His Majesty the King. Al Saleh commended His Royal Highness's support and commitment to consolidating the cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities. He highlighted the national efforts aimed at consolidating constructive dialogue and enhancing the kingdom's development and achievements. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, uh, Prime Minister and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, EDB, Prince uh, Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 4 of the year 2023, amending some provisions of Edict 1 of the year 2021 on restructuring the EDB. Article 1, uh, Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa shall be appointed as a member of the EDB until the end of the term of the current board. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Lim Salam, chaired the first uh, procedural session of the second session of the sixth legislative term. He delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and great gratitude to His Majesty the King for opening the session. He also expressed thanks to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for enhancing constructive co cooperation between the Council and the government. He also praised the cooperation of the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh. He extended sincere thanks to the Minister of Parliament Affairs, Ghanem Al Muaynin, and for his efforts in ensuring ensuring cooperation with the government. The Council then agreed to issue a statement of solidarity with the Palestinian people. The Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh chaired the first procedural session of the second session of the sixth legislative term. Al Saleh expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for opening the session and pride in His Majesty's support for the legislative authority, which constitutes a solid foundation for performing the legislative responsibilities and tasks. He also thanked His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for attending the opening ceremony, which affirms the depth of cooperation and joint coordination between the legislative and executive authorities. Al Saleh notified that members that the Council's office will determine the members of the committee responsible to or responding to the royal speech and coordinate between the members' request to determine the nomination list for membership in the permanent uh, specific committees. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Tifizayani, commended the comprehensive approach presented by the Royal Address at the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term. The minister said the Royal Address underscored Bahrain status as a leading model in reform, modernization, national unity, coexistence, and the diplomacy of tolerance and peace. He added that the address represented a roadmap for the sustainability of national and developmental achievements within the framework of the state of law, justice institutions, and the respect of human rights in light of the ongoing cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Dr. Ziani also underlined the diplomatic approach highlighted by the Royal Address of Bahrain's commitment to its alliances, integration and cooperation within the framework of the GCC and the Arab League, which serves the people of the region and supports joint rights and causes on top of which is the Palestinian cause. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amn al affirmed that the content of the royal address delivered by His Majesty the King at the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term reflects the wise visions regarding the adoption of national policies and action plans which benefit the nation and the citizens. She extended thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for his directive to develop an action plan concerned with preserving the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities. The minister said that this directive reflects the wise leadership's keenness to preserve the cultural and historical character. She stressed that the ministry will give the joint action plan to implement the royal decree a high priority during the next stage. The Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Naimi, affirmed that the address delivered by His Majesty the King during the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term is a beacon for national action during the next phase to continue Bahrain's developmental achievements for the benefit of the nation and citizens. He said that His Majesty's praise of the joint efforts of the executive and legislative authorities is a tribute to all employees of the two authorities. He referred to the Royal Directive to develop an action plan concerned with preserving the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities and reviving the Isa Grand Palace and the well-known neighborhoods in Amharag. The minister expressed appreciation for the directives of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to government agencies, stressing that this directive is a translation of the approach of His Majesty to transform His Majesty's vision into plans that put the interests of the nation and citizens at the forefront of the goals of government work. He pledged His Majesty and His Royal Highness to harness all national energies to achieve the desired goals. The chairman of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, BACA, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his royal address at the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. He expressed his pride of His Majesty's directive to develop an action plan concerned with preserving the historical and cultural identity of the buildings and cities of Bahrain. He stated that uh, Baka has seeks, uh, there seeks to revive the city and uh, to also highlight its heritage and culture and pivotal role, which is integrated within its rich and diverse history and reflects its authentic identity linked to its people and their customs. The governor of Muharraq Salman al-Mannai has expressed or praised the royal directives of His Majesty the King during the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term to develop an action plan concerned with preserving the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities. He said that the government and its people are honored by the royal directives. He added that His Majesty's speech was a source of pride for the people of Muharraq. The governor also expressed thanks and gratitude and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for his directives to government agencies agencies to implement His Majesty's order. A number of representatives, council members hailed the content of the royal address of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the occasion of the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils. On this occasion, Representative Muhammad Al Alawi has affirmed that the contents of the royal speech are a beacon for the path of goodness and development and the realization of the aspiration of His Majesty to serve the nation and the citizens in constructive cooperation with the government. For his part, Representative Ahmed Adoy praised the royal address, expressing his pride in the royal directive to develop an action plan concerned with preserving the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities. Representative Dr. Hisham Al-Ashiri also praised the efforts of the leadership and government in preserving the authentic national heritage by working to revive Isa Grand Palace and adopting it as one of the main headquarters for work. For his part, Representative Abdullah Adhan described the address of His Majesty the King as comprehensive and objective and stressed that His Majesty's vision comes as a starting point towards a sustainable future built on strong foundations.